On this episode of Law Weekly, a chat with senior advocates of Nigeria, Femi Falano. We talk about the need to reform the electoral process and more. Also showing on the program highlights from the 2022 All Nigeria Judges Conference of the Lower Courts, plus a recap of the top trending legal stories in the news. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Shola Shuyeli. Last week, the Chief Justice of Nigeria saw in members of the Election Petition Tribunal for the 2023 general elections. Now, some people, including lawyers, have argued that there is a need to reform the process and allow election petitions to be filed and determined by the regular courts instead of the current situation, which disrupts the system by taking some judges of other court proceedings to attend to election cases. This is the starting point of my conversation with Senior Advocate of Nigeria, Mr. Femi Falano. That has always been my position. Uh, but as regards to the constitutional provisions, uh, particularly Section 285, which uh, has mandated the election petition tribunals to conclude hearing of election petitions within 180 days. The argument then is that judges are drawn from all the states of the Federation and constituted into election petition tribunals. Mm -hmm. And they have six months within which to hear and determine election petitions because they are time bound. Yes. But my argument is that all cases are time bound. Uh, if you look at the uh, Administration of Criminal Justice Act, lawyers talk of cases that are time bound when it suits their purpose. For instance, under the Administration of Criminal Justice Act, no criminal case shall be adjourned for more than five, seven days. Not more than seven days. Mm. Two, you cannot amend more than five times. But because rich people, including corrupt, alleged corrupt people, are involved, lawyers have made the mockery of the law. Yes. In, a, in, in a way that we are back to pre-2015, you know, when the law, well, you know, no, was amended. Yes. I have I've had cases where senior lawyers will cross-examine one witness for two, three years. And that is not within the contemplation of the law. But when it comes to election petitions, the same senior lawyers are likely involved. This time around, you hardly can cry I mean, a witness for more than five, ten minutes. Lawyers also are just. So we must, we must not blame the judiciary. Lawyers involved in election petitions, in pre-election matter, particularly senior lawyers, will have to review the system and see how we can treat all Litigants equally. For me, it is illegal. It is clearly illegal. Discriminatory and unconstitutional. To postpone the cases of other litigants. Other litigants indefinitely. Why you are concentrating all attention on political cases. It has to be challenged. I, I saw the problem in 2019, and I began the campaign that retired judges be invited to attend to election petitions. Why judges, serving judges, will have to hear all cases before them. And for regular cases, we even complain that the judges are not enough. Talkers of when you now pull them out for election for six months. Yes. It's not fair. Uh, with respect to the cases of other litigants. And they cannot be justified. And that is why I have tried to look at the problem. We need to amend the constitution to allow retired judges mm -hmm. 
to handle the election petition. The Nigerian Bar Association would love to meet the stakeholder, relevant stakeholder, including the members of the National Assembly and the various houses of assembly, you know, mm. with a view to amending the relevant provisions of the Constitution, because we cannot go on like this. Some of your colleagues have also argued that it is time for the courts to stay, especially out of pre-election matters, that we should let parties handle their internal affairs by themselves, because pre-election matters, it's, it's usually the internal affairs of parties that come to play, and so we should, the courts should stay out of pre-election matters, which is mostly internal affairs of political parties, because it seems that the judiciary is the one determining candidates of elections or winners of elections, as opposed to the intendment that it be the electorate. I have criticized the practice, and I call it the tribunalization of democracy. It's not accepted. Whereby primaries are conducted, elections are conducted, the winners are not determined until the courts so. make pronouncement. It's not in tune with Section 14 of the Constitution, which has made provision for participatory democracy. But again, you cannot blame the courts. The blame goes to the political class. Yeah whose members are largely in discipline and lawless. So in a situation where you have impunity on the part of political parties, aggrieved members are bound to rush to the court. Where I am disturbed, and where I get worried, is where I judges substitute candidates candidates, or rather impose candidates on the electorate. Mm. If the system is fought, if a primary has been conducted in defiance of the constitution of a party and the electoral act, what a court should do is to direct the delegates to conduct Fresh primaries. Why those who engage in impunity are sanctioned? The court must proceed to order the delegates or the electorate to choose their preferred candidates. <laughs> but in situation where minorities, those who lost elections, as we have witnessed in about two or three states in recent time, are pronounced the winners of elections, elections that they had lost. For me, it means a mockery of democracy. The people must be allowed to elect their winners, their representatives. Mm -hmm. And that is and that is the stipulation of Article 13 of the African Charter on Human and People's Rights that every African shall have the right to participate in the politics of their country, choose their representatives under the electoral act of the country. And that's what we should go back to. I, I was worried when I claimed that over 600 cases have been fired. Hmm. And I have made a point before now that I cannot complain. Why do you say so? Because by virtue of section 285, subsection 14, INEC is empowered to take decisions which can be challenged in court by aggrieved parties. But where INEC simply says, like Pontius Pilate. And washes his hands off. Our hands are tied. Your hands are not tied. You can't, you can't afford to wash your hands off. Hmm. The law has empowered you 
to take decisions because Section 29 of the Electoral Act stipulates that I must be primaries. I next shall monitor the primaries. It's not for those provisions are not for the correction. So my own position is that if I make a set, these are the results of the primary that we monitored. Most of those cases will not have been filed. But where I next says, go to court. It leaves room for all manner of people to flood the courts with all sort of cases. But if I next has put on his feet, this is the result. You didn't take part in the primary, so we cannot include your name. Mm. Huh? Well, but a lot of our politicians are bad losers. They will still go to court anyways. No, they will still go to court. At that stage, they will be dealt with by the law. Okay. And the picture will be clearer. Now, why do you want to waste your time once you are confronted with the result of the primary, the reports of INEC? And that is vital for our court because the law has imposed a duty on INEC. You know, I mean, look at what has just happened in Akwa Ibom State, where the primary had taken place in May. Somebody took part in the presidential election primary well, on June that. 8. After losing or stepping down for uh, the candidate uh, that emerged, eventually emerged, the person that eventually emerged, you now suddenly say, I that took part retrospectively. Mm -hmm. You know. And the high court said, no, you won. <laughs> Good enough. The court of appeal has said, no. That is illogical. So, and I, you didn't take part in the primary. So you could not have won. What could INEC have done differently? If INEC has said, has stood by the report of the primary conductor mm. in that state, supervised by the, the immediate past president, I mean, REC, that Mr. Mikey Kinney. I would have sorted out the problem. But where uh, a commissioner like Mr. Aruna Mohammed, <laughs> your colleague, was saying, oh, you know, we are neutral. You don't have any interest. Go to court. Go to court. Well, and you are saying, oh, our rank is wrong. So you have abdicated your Responsibility. constitutional duty sure. to act as an umpire and rely on your own reports, which is, which is what the Court of Appeal has now applied. But what about cases where lawyers are fingered, fingered as the most culpable instigators of, the, of this rust that we have? Because some cases that are already decided, lawyers still go to court to further test the law. In having a new culture, a new electoral culture, we must deal with lawyers who are causing confusion and filing frivolous cases. And lawyers who also go around maintaining conflicting positions. Because it's not enough to sanction judges for giving conflicting decisions. decisions. Lawyers who instigate such cases have to be brought to book. Who, who has that responsibility? The MBA should monitor or who? who the MBA will, will have to monitor okay. and then send reports. Or lawyers who appear before, who appear on the other side in those cases would report they, formally. They, they, they should be encouraged, supported by the MBA. Mm -hmm. Because we need to have a system that will engender respect, that will also promote the rule of law and consistency in the law. The law must be predictable. But where, you know, in the same jurisdiction, in the same jurisdiction, judges are given conflicting positions to favor one ruling party. Such decisions expose the judiciary to ridicule. To unwarranted ridicule. Welcome back. As part of efforts to ensure speedy dispensation of justice, the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Olukayo de Ariwola, has asked judicial officers to remain forthright at all times. He was speaking in Abuja at the 2022 All Nigerian Judges Conference of the Lower Court, where he was represented by Justice of the Supreme Court, Justice John Okoro, who says that judicial officers as image makers of the judiciary must safeguard the sanctity of the judiciary 
as the last hope of the common man. We have that report up next. From every nook and cranny of the country, judges of the lower courts converge for the 2022 annual conference organized by the National Judicial Institute. They include magistrates and judges of the Sharia area and customary courts. The administrator of the institute takes to the podium to highlight the role of the judiciary. As ministers in the Temple of Justice, judicial officers occupy a prestigious and invaluable position in the society. However, this elected position for viewers is not one without its own difficulties. After all, greater powers come with greater responsibilities. It follows, therefore, that as judicial officers, we are watch what we must continually be integrating intelligence, excellence with a renewed commitment to defending the truth and in this speedy the preservation of justice without fair offer. The chairman of the House Committee on Judiciary calls out to the relevant stakeholders on the need for improved welfare for judicial officers in order to ensure speedy dispensation of justice. A point has to be made that the starting point of enhancing the role of the judiciary in nation building is by improving the living and working conditions of judges, especially judges of the lower court. I will not waste the time to enumerate the challenges that we face, lack of official vehicles, poor living conditions, and poor working conditions. We all know that. These conditions negatively affect judges and they enhance their role in nation building and slow down the pace of justice delivery, especially in a system that is set up to dispense justice from America. The committee uses medium, medium to call on state government, especially the executive and the legislative arms of government, to prioritize the living and working conditions of judges of the lower court, given their important role in nation building. Next on the conference program. The president of the Nigerian Bar Association also emphasizes the importance of the judiciary in creating a reformed country. Not less the responsibility that those of you who are also privileged to serve at the bench of the lower courts to perform uh, towards the administration of justice. So every opportunity that we get to come to the National Judicial Institute is an opportunity to improve ourselves, to further equip ourselves towards the discharge of that responsibility that is singularly and distinctively put on top of us as members of the legal profession. I commend to each and every one of you that is privileged to be uh, on the bench of the lower court to consider that responsibility with this enormity of understanding because it is not just that you are sitting to resolve disputes, but that justice that you dispense is meant to keep this country together, it's meant to reform this country, it's meant to recover this country, and it is meant to reposition this country in its place of pride in the community uh, of nations. The theme of the conference is enhancing the role of the judiciary in nation building and the chief justice of Nigeria, ably represented, reminds judicial officers of the need to be forthright always. While synergies between all three camps of governments cannot be dispensed with in nation building. Of equal importance is the need to strengthen synergies within each arm, since a house divided against itself cannot stand. Consequently, the judiciary must at all times present a united front as our collective efforts are required in achieving the desired goal. We must also not lose sight of the fact that the actual strength of a nation lies in its citizens. And this means that the people are the mainspring of a nation's existence. It therefore comes as no surprise that the judiciary which is an institution within the nation, thrives on the confidence reposed on in it by the people. Having been dubbed as the last hope of the common man, we must do all within our power to continually live up to this sobriquet 
and make certain that the confidence we post in us does not win. The 2022 All Nigeria Judges Conference of the Lower Courts is an annual event organized by the National Judicial Institute with the aim of promoting efficiency, uniformity, and the improvement in the quality of judicial services. And just before we go, let's do a quick recap of some of the top legal stories we're tracking at the courts. We begin with the report that the Federal High Court sitting in Lagos has granted an order of interim injunction restraining Nigeria Air Limited, Ethiopian Airlines, the Minister of Aviation, Hadi Sarika, and the Attorney General of the Federation, Abuba Kamalami, from executing the proposed national carrier agreement between the federal government and the strategic equity partner, Ethiopian Airlines. Justice Ambrose Lewis Alago are granted the order while ruling on an application brought by the registered trustees of the Airline Operators of Nigeria, Asman Air Services Limited, Air Peace Nigeria Limited, Max Air Limited, United Nigeria Airlines Company Limited, and Top Brass Aviation Limited. The order restrained the Minister of Aviation, the AGF, Ethiopian Airlines, and others from giving effect to and or suspending the sale and transfer of the operations of Nigeria Airlines and Ethiopian Airlines pending the determination of the application seeking to stop the project. In Abuja, the Federal High Court Abuja has adjourned indefinitely the trial of the leader of the proscribed indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, Nam Dekanu, in the terrorism charges brought against him by the federal government. Justice Binta Yako put off the trial indefinitely at the instance of Kanu pending the resolution of the federal government's appeal against the October 13th judgment of the Court of Appeal that discharged him from the terrorism charges. Meanwhile, Kanu has discontinued a 20 billion naira suit he filed against the AGF and the Director General of the National Intelligence Agency, Ahmed Abubakar. Staying in Abuja, the Court of Appeal has set aside the judgment of Federal High Court Abuja, removing Godzilla Akwabu as the All Progressives Congress candidate for Akwaibom Northwest Senatorial District. A three-member panel of justices led by Justice Dan Lamis and Chi held that Senator Akwabio, being a presidential aspirant of the APC, could not participate in the valid primary of the party held on May 27th and monitored by the Independent National Electoral Commission, which produced Udom Ekpudom as candidate. The former minister has said he will approach the Supreme Court to obtain the judgment. Still on political matters, an Abuja-based lawyer Mike Enaro Eba has sued the presidential candidate of the APC, Ashiwa Jubola Tinumbu, over allegations bordering on certificate forgery, falsification of age, and lying on oath. He sued Ashiwa Tinumbu in three separate but direct criminal complaints filed at the Chief Magistrate Court sitting in Wuse. In documents out before the court, the lawyer alleged that Ashiwa Tinumbu lied on oath and presented a forged Chicago State University certificate to INEC with the intent that it may be acted upon as genuine, thereby committing the offense of forgery. The case is yet to be settled for hearing. In another suit, a media and tourism professional, Ambassador Wali Ojo Lanre, has filed a suit against the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Peter Obi, for allegedly involving an underage girl child in his political rally in Lagos. The petitioner who is suing as a concerned Nigerian and litigation friend of the toddler is seeking 50 million naira as damages. According to him, it is illegal, misleading, unlawful, exploitative and abusive for the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Peter Obi, to allow participation and usage of a toddler in an adult political rally and to post the picture and video of the toddler via his Twitter handle referring to her as a poster child. The case is yet to be fixed for hearing. And we round off in Lagos with a report that the key suspect, Chidima Juku, in the murder of Chief Executive Officer of Super TV, Osufo Ataga has told the Lagos side court sitting at the Tafar Balewa Square that the two statements she wrote at the police station were torn and she was forced to sign the ones written by the police officers. Chidimau testified in a trial within trial to determine the voluntariness of her statement's defense, told Justice Yetunde Adesanya that the police wrote a statement, asked her to rehearse the same and pass it off as her statement. Justice Yetunde Adesanya has adjourned the case to January 11, 2023 for the adoption of final written addresses in the trial within trial. And that's our program for this week. Don't forget that you can find this episode of the program and past episodes on our YouTube channel. 
I'm Shola Shayeli. Thank you for watching and see you next week.